Alright, hi guys. Let's start the next episode of five PYQs in five minutes. Through these PYQs, you are actually revising five important topics as well. The very first question that we are having today is which of the following agent used in rheumatoid arthritis act by opioid and non-opioid receptors? This question is from June 2022 FMG, but it has been asked already in NEET PG and also in INICT. So which of the following is acting by opioid and non-opioid mechanism? The answer to this question is going to be tramadol. Now, which class of drug is tramadol? Why it is opioid? Because definitely they are the mu opioid receptor agonist. Along with that, they are actually having SNARI. SNARI is serotonin noradrenaline reuptake inhibitor. So they are going to increase the level of serotonin and they are also going to increase the level of noradrenaline. I want you to add one more drug here. Similar to this, since they have already asked this question, there is one more drug by the name of Tapentadol. So this can be an upcoming potential MCQ, Tapentadol. It's similar to Tramadol, right? So Tapentadol, it is mainly a uh, mu receptor agonist with nari what is nari nor adeline reuptake inhibitor that is only going to increase the level of nor adeline. paracetamol is a cox 3 inhibitor it is mainly a uh, NSAID right then uh, again no, not having any anti-inflammatory property itori coxib is a coxib they are the selective cox 2 inhibitor selective cox 2 inhibitor and methotrexate it's one of the dihydrofolate reductase inhibitor having many uses like rheumatoid arthritis psoriasis choriocarcinoma and many others like osteosarcoma okay let's see the next one all of the following are side effect of retodrine except you should first know which class of drug is retodrine guys retodrine is one of the beta 2 agonists if it is a beta 2 agonist, do remember, will it cause vasodilatation? Yes or no, any beta 2 agonist will be causing vasodilatation that can lead to fall in the blood pressure. Any fall in the blood pressure can also lead to reflex tachycardia. Not only that, at high doses, they will also act at the beta. They can also stimulate the beta 1 and they can increase the heart rate as well. So direct heart rate can also be increased and the reflex tachycardia is also one of the theoretically one of the possibility. Apart from that, remember, this beta 2 is going to act in many other areas. Like for example, will it be acting at the liver? liver ke beta 2 be kaam karega and they will be causing gluconeogenesis and glycogenolysis tell me guys if they are going to cause gluconeogenesis and glycogenolysis what will happen to the glucose level will it lead to hyperglycemia or hypoglycemia you already have your answer right now that all of the following are side effects of retodin except see they will not be causing hypoglycemia they are going to cause hyperglycemia tachycardia is one of the side effects hypotension is one of the side effects why tremor because again beta 2 of the skeletal muscle will get stimulated and they can lead to tremor as well do remember it is also known to cause pulmonary edema possibly by reducing the capillary tone because their beta 2 are always going to cause vasodilatation so possibly by reducing the capillary tone they can even lead to pulmonary edema this is also one of the side effect of retodrine beta 2 agonist retodrine there is one more by the name of isoxuprine where do we use they are the agent that can be utilized as a tocolytic agent both of them ye or ye both of them are utilized as a tocolytic to slow down the progression of labor, we are going to utilize them. The next question is to minimize the HP action suppression. Remember, this is one of the FMG examination question directly taken from Goodman Gilman. What is the correct method of administration of steroid given at night just before the bedtime, given on alternate days, replaced with the beta methasone, divide in three doses? Now, let's see what book has to say because I want to answer it directly from the book. Exogenous steroid can lead to HP action suppression definitely to diminish the HP action suppression following steps are taken intermediate action preparation. They are telling give intermediate action give on alternate day intermediate with the uh, intermediate acting should be given in the morning as a single dose. Okay. Alternate day with the same glucocorticoids and pulse therapy with the higher glucocorticoid doses. They are not telling you to divide. They are telling you to give a higher, higher pulse, you know, pulse therapy with the higher glucocorticoid on alternate day. So given the option that we are having alternate day therapy given at night just before bedtime. No, again, as I told you that higher doses and you're not supposed to divide them. You know? You're not supposed to replace them. Same steroid they are telling you give alternate days. So alternate day therapy is the best one to minimize the HPX suppression. Next question, a patient with chronic pain related to gout for a month is subsided after uh, medication. What will be added to for the excretion of uric acid? So you are going to add the uricosuric among the given agent. The only uricosuric is going to be probenicid. There are others as well that is known as your lessinurac, benzbromarone, benzbromarone, sulfinpyrazone, sulfinpyrazone, all of them are actually going to be your uricosuric agent. Allopurinol, febuxostat, they both are xanthine oxidase inhibitor. They can be utilized the most preferred drug in a chronic gout. Colchicine, again, in a refractory or non-responsive cases of the acute gout, we can utilize colchicine as well, remember, right? 
So probability is one of the uricosuric agent among the given choices that we know here. And then if the examiner is going to ask you drug of choice in acute gout, then definitely you can use NSAID. NSAID. All the NSAID can be utilized except aspirin, that is another MCQ. So gout ko again, we have quickly summarized kar liya. chronic. Mein kya denge? Na? So chronic gout, ke liye we are going to utilize allopurinol or febuxostat. And a uricosuric agent is probenacid, lecinirat, benzbromarone, sulfinpyrazone. Fifth one, which of the following is the mechanism of action of allopyrinol? Just from the previous question also, we will be able to solve this one. This is one of the xanthine oxidase inhibitor. They are not dihydrofolate inductase inhibitor. That can be one of the, uh, you know, methotrexate is one of them. And a thymidylate synthase, no phosphoryl uh, uh, transferase inhibitor. No, they are not the inhibitor of the same type. So gout is one of the very high yield topic. And a, you can actually uh, revise gout also from here or if from the previous lecture that we have conducted on YouTube, right? So this was uh, five MCQs in five minutes. I hope all of you guys have enjoyed this series. And uh, please, uh, you know, uh, share and subscribe with your friend. Uh, subscribe this channel and share among your friends. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.